Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. It's good to be with you. This is the channel where I show you what to look for and I tell you what the pizzas are really worth. I've got guests. They're coming now. Thanks for being with me. I'm Dr. Lori. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Good morning. It's Angel from good Arizona. Good morning, Angel. How are things in Arizona? Good? Really hot and getting really hotter. Hot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see what you got, hon. Thanks for joining okay. me. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, so I have this. Okay. It's a water a watercolor. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. Um, uh, it's 14 by 17, and then the scene is 9 by 12. Nice. So Angel, tell me a little bit about you. What happened? Are you just starting out um doing this with the channel? Yes, ma'am. I've been watching you for a little while now and kind of uh just, you know uh haven't really had the courage to kind of like chat or anything but um i'm just really excited i'm going to get started and reselling soon so okay yeah so so you're you didn't have the courage what gave you the courage um just like the fact that i just i felt like empowered with the knowledge that you helped me learn great so, i'm so glad i really, Good. Well, I you really appreciate that well, you can do this. You can do this. Everybody's telling me, hey, you know, Dr. Lori, I up my game. I'm making more money. I can I can really do what I want to do because I love art, antiques, collecting. I like the vintage stuff. So this piece, how'd you get this piece and how much did you pay for this piece? And if any of you out there who are watching have a question for, for me with respect to Angel's piece, type it in. Hey, Dr. Lori, I want to know this. Hey, Dr. Lori, I'm thinking that. I want to know what you guys are thinking too. So, So what happened? How did you acquire it? Uh, so I went into an antique mall and I was looking around at paintings okay. and when uh, I saw this one, like this one and then this one behind me were also, they were together. Okay. Um, and I just fell in love with it. I mean, this one has so much color to it and uh, I think it's, I'm, I'm assuming Peruvian. Okay. I'm Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it right in the in the shot so everybody can see it. There you go. Yeah, I'm sorry. You have, we're going to have to. Yeah, okay, that's good. I'm sorry. We love your beautiful face. We'd like to see your face. We're just trying to see the object. You're a sweetheart. Okay. okay so basically, what, what you have here is you're probably attracted by the nice color. Notice that there are complementary colors that are working there. You probably are also attracted, and this is to help all of you educate your eyes. So you're probably also attracted by the peaks and valleys, not only because it's mountains, but by the peaks and valleys, the up and down, which is how our eyes actually work when we're looking at paintings. It makes us feel grounded. It makes us feel comfortable. So these are some of the things you might have been attracted to. Um, the other things um, that you're seeing, yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad you're learning a lot. That's what I'm trying to do. I want you to learn so you can succeed, so you can be basically do what you want to do. So that particular piece, does it have a marking on it in terms like a signature or such? But the no, color... No. No okay, signature. but the colors together are really what you're looking for. And the other thing, when you looked at, in fact, the back, I see a cardboard back, yeah. right? And it's, it's, a, it's tiny, a pretty hard. The tiniest little nails. They're the little so tiny small. brads, yeah. Well, people will use the little tiny brads usually after 1950. Um, mm -hmm. The brads can be used a little earlier too, but typically when it looks like that with that nice, you know, straight piece, that's basically what you're looking at. Now, let's look at the front again. I do like to look at the back because the back gives a lot of information, it gives information about protection. It gives information about framing. It gives information about age. It also gives information about condition. Now, th this piece I think is wonderful because of the animals. To me, when I see those little llama animals, oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. They're don't really you, cute. Don't you think? I think they're really cute. And I they're, like they are adorable. And I like the tall and colorful, of course, pieces. The the buildings is pretty nice. So I would say it's probably South American because of the subject matter. I would say that the, this artist is obviously trained. And I mm -hmm. like the the different um, hues and tones of particularly the, the landscape that goes up. All those different browns are really quite, quite nice. How big is it? Is it 16 by 20, a standard size? Um it's uh, the frame is 14 by 17 and then the visible area is like nine by 12. Okay. The, the visible, part. the visible area in art history is called in museums is called site. The, the site, site size. Okay. So what's the okay. size of the site? What you the see? Site if there was a nine, by, nine by 12. 
Right. So nine by 12. So nine by 12 is, of course, another standard. And these are some of the things you want to look for the tips value on that piece, $150 without any information about the artist. We know he's trained or she's trained based on the way in which they executed the piece. It's based on actual sales records were similar 20th century, late 20th century watercolors, probably South American with by an artist with some training will sell for. I've included the frame. I always include the frame in my valuations because the frames have value too. If it wasn't mm -hmm. in a frame, it would be worth less, of course. Okay. And the one behind you is probably mm -hmm. by a different artist. Oh, really? You, yeah, because you see that that particular piece has a different compositional elements, not the same type of compositional elements. What that oh. means is to put that figure way in the front, which is called a repoussoir figure, a figure you got to jump over visually in order to get yeah. into the rest of the painting. So I think, you know, they were together, but I don't think that they're by the same artist. They might've just been owned by the same person. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Angel, nice to see you. Keep it yeah. up. You can do this. Watch the videos. There's a lot of information there. I'm happy to see you. Good luck, honey. Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Lori. Bye, darling. Bye. <laughs> Nice to see everybody. I'm glad to see that pe people are actually saying, hey, you know what? I can do this. I'm going to try it. You know, a lot of folks saying that you've seen on many of my videos, the people who have succeeded too. the people that I watched you, you what you showed me what to look for. And I'm basically hey, going to do this. So there you go. Hey, wow. you're on. You're on. Who are you? And what are you doing? <laughs> um, my wife is Tiffany and she's having me hold this deal. He's a little guy. Um, You're a good husband. What's your name? <laughs> she, uh, my name is Al. Um, she wants to know more about this guy, and she watches your show, and, and uh, she's learned a lot of stuff from you. So thank you. You're welcome. You're, You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad she's learned a lot from me. Your name is Al. Did I get that right? Yeah. So where are you, Al? I'm in Pennsylvania uh, today. Miller, Missouri. Miller, Missouri. Nice. It's hot in Missouri, though. This time of year, the furnace, they turn up the furnace in Missouri, you know? <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty wet and wet and cold here still. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm glad to see people are making online sales because they're watching the channel. I'm telling you what to learn, what to look for. I'm so glad that, that your wife's learning from you. Where's Tiffany? Is she even around? <laughs> she is. Um, okay. Here, here, hang on. Does she I'll talk to, to you. It's okay, Al. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cutie pie. Al's cracking me up. It's okay. I can talk to Al. So, did your wife um did your wife find this in a in an antique shop or shopping around yard sale? What garage sale? Garage um, sale. Yeah. I, I, what's the type of it? Can I you show me the bottom of it, Al? He's solid wood carved. Okay. So this is called prop. This is called polychromed wood. All right. Poly, many, chrome, color, wood, wood, <laughs> okay? Polychrome wood. So if you're going to describe it, if she's going to resell it, she wants to describe it that way. Polychromed wood, poly, many, right? Chrome is color, right? Color, yep. multicolored, and then, of yep. course, wood. So it's pretty heavy. And, of it course, is. that particular piece, like many Asian pieces, have a have a uh, a subject matter that they're trying to convey. So sometimes they're trying right. to convey prosperity or wealth or a uh, knowledge, all different things. So these figures are pretty typical. Oftentimes you're not going to see them basically laying down. This one is supposed to in, in, give you an idea that they're actually standing up. So that piece is early 20th century, trying to look back to the ancient world. How much did you pay for it? Probably five bucks if I had Probably to get five it. bucks. Okay. So she got it because it was unusual? Yeah. She likes right. unusual stuff. Okay. Unusual is harder to sell. People like unusual. They like weird and they like stuff they haven't seen before, but usually harder to sell because it's not the typical, oh, I recognize this and I want one. I got so you. So it's a little bit harder to sell. Value on that piece, um, the, the carved wood, about $75. They're made in large numbers. We see a lot of them, only all different, um, all different figures. Right. So that's what you're looking at. That's a nice piece. Is that what she typically buys and sells, or is this like an unusual out of the box kind this of thing? Is an unusual thing that she just picked up. Okay. She sells. She buys and sells all kinds of stuff. Glass. What is she? Glass collectibles. Um, I mean, you name it, she'll try and resell it. Usually on a usually on a uh, YouTube on um hmm, on an eBay store or maybe an Etsy store or maybe on her own YouTube channel. Uh, I think eBay is what she okay. does mainly in Facebook. Okay. 
Okay. So that so she sources in one place and then she resells someplace else. Well, she's got a she darn good husband. She, she knows how to pick all kinds of stuff and she knew how to pick you too. So nice <laughs> to meet you, Al. My regards to Tiffany. Thanks. Thank you very much. And have Bye, a good baby. Day. See ya. I'm so glad that she's learning a lot. I'm sorry we couldn't see her. And I'm happy to take your questions about these objects or any questions while you're here. Um, this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. And here's my next guest. Remember, my guests, I don't know what's coming. I don't know who's coming. I don't know what objects are coming. Uh, thanks very much for making your um, cameras horizontal the best you can. Uh, your, piece, your camera might be locked. Uh, the reason for, of course, that is it has to be horizontal because otherwise we really can't uh, clearly see everything. And then we, we, I, so I need it to be horizontal best you can. If you, you can work on that and we'll come back to you. Um, you sometimes have to swipe down all the different devices are all different, but you'll figure it out. So I'm Dr. Lori. Here's my next guest again. Not everything, nothing vetted. Hi, how are you? I am good. How are you? I'm good. Where are you? What's your name? I am in Rhode Island. I'm in North Providence, Rhode Island. My name is Carmen. Hi, Carmen. I like Providence. I went to North school in Providence, Providence for a while. Uh, one of my siblings also went to school there for a while. It's a wonderful place. I like Providence a lot. I like, I really, I like Narragansett. <laughs> I like oh, the beach. Love it. Jamestown love is it. my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so nice Absolutely. to see you. So nice what's to happening you. today? Your hands on the, on the, on the All right. thing. Am I doing it? She's nervous. I'm sorry, my daughter is going to fix it for me. Hurry up and fix She's it. nervous. Right. She had That's to fix it. Don't hurry. Um, Oh. oh my God. You're not I'm nervous. Not Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. That's and I can't I... have I can't have children in the uh He's not um, a child. She's actually 31. Well, whatever child. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean for you to reveal everybody's age. So tell me what we've got. Know. The seven ages of a physician. Yes, I used to do housekeeping for a doctor, and when I cleaned his house, he left this here. He gave this to me rather. Okay. It says it's from James Chapin. A tribute to the medical profession, and yep. it's all different pitches. Okay. Whoops. Take your Sorry. time. Take your time. Sorry. Let's see. So it says the doctor's son. Let's back up the camera a little bit. Sorry. So people can see it. Let's back it up and let's center the camera. How about that? Better, a little better. So these are color lithographic prints within a uh, what we a velo bound book about physicians, and they're all yeah. different pictures from, of course, um, different artists about the medical profession, right? Correct. Okay. So there are people who would say cut up the book and sell them individually. I never say that because that's not really what it's intended for. I would say value on that piece is about twenty five dollars for the book with all the images in it. Really? That's it? Huh? Oh, that's, that's it. all? Yeah, that's all. Because this is why people say, oh, let's individually sell the color lithographs. But you right. don't want to break. You... Go I'm ahead. Sorry. It has a separation also to like actually say to have it separated and framed. Yeah. Like it has so something you... to pull it out. Yeah. So you could do that. You okay. could. That's basically the velo binding. That's the inexpensive binding for it. So um, it's not intended to be a pepper. A, perforation but in fact that's the velo bound that they decided so they can publish more of them there's so they're not spending money on binding different type uh -huh. of binding you know uh you know for example uh they used to use that for law briefs velo binding and the reason for it was in, it was cheaper than you can actually do a regular binding so value on that piece about 25 dollars it's nice it, color I'm lithographs I wish I he had so left you to show you. <laughs> I wish he had, well, I wish he had left you something a little bit more valuable since you know you helped him for so I long. Us, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but I'm happy to help you. I'm glad you were able to join me and ask Dr. Lori live in regards to Providence. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure, honey. So lots of things happening, of course, lots of objects, nice objects, and a lot of things out there, of course. Five days retired, learning so much, brought your prime membership and had a video chat, doing it and loving it. Hello, hello. Hello, Carla. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. I'm so glad that it's helping you. I'm so glad. And I'll tell you what, congratulations on your retirement. You earned it and you deserve to do whatever you want to do. You earned it. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? I got a big smile, but I don't know if your internet connection is quick enough. So 
We might have a problem with your internet connection. I like that sculpture. So what I'm seeing in that sculpture is weight, and I'm seeing a nice piece that has a whole lot of uh, figural elements on it. So a couple of figures, and of course, a light at the top. So that starts to tell me early 1900s, 1920s. She said nothing so far. I can only see it from what we can see in the video. And these are pretty typical Art Deco style lamps. The companies that used to make those, Frank Art and New Art, those people, so a lot of those um, those particular types of lamps. I actually just did an online appraisal of, of a lamp like this one. I'm assuming that one is pretty tall, you know, pretty tall, and um, it's in pretty good condition. And I'm going to, uh, it looks like it's also in working order. It looks like the, the wrap around the top, that cup around the top of it, where you see the flame, sort of like the flame on Lady Liberty, uh, that flame globe at the top, it looks like that particular cap has been replaced. So I don't know if our caller can hear me, but um, if you watch the replay, she'll know that that lamp is worth just about $350. So that was an appraisal just visually without any information from her. I'm sorry, I would have liked to have featured her, but I don't think her internet connection was fast enough. You gotta be on, of course, uh, a good internet connection, a good fast speed so we can do it. Oh, well. Anyway, we're doing Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. And again, all of my videos are here to help you. That's why I'm doing it. And I have the education, the experience, and the knowledge to help you identify what's valuable and, and show you how to sell it for top dollar. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Christina Webb, and I'm calling from Christiansburg, Virginia. Hi, Christina. Nice to see you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Well, today's my can... today's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. I love Thank birthdays. You. Thank you. I think birthdays are great. I don't think we celebrate birthdays enough. I think we have to do them big. So it's a good birthday. So now I want you to remember about focal length. Don't get too close to the camera because it won't focus. Sorry. Um, so no, no, no need to apologize ever to me. I'm here to help you. So tell me, how did you acquire this? And do you have more than just this one? Oh, you have? No, I wish I had more than this one. Um, oh, it was sold like this. And because of you, I realized that the lid did not fit. So this is not the lid to this jar. It was sold together. They put tape okay. on it. But after I got it, I realized that's not the lid. Okay. It's not a jar. I think it's a, a cup, a drinking cup. It's a, and it's a sake cup. And it's kind of got a naughty picture on it. Yes. Well, erotica in these pieces are pretty typical, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Can I see the bottom? So there's no mark on the bottom at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got it. So a couple of different things that are happening here. First of all, that's a sake cup. So typically we use those for sake. Could it be used for tea? Yes, but it's, it's a kind of shape that we usually see for sake. Sake cups might also be smaller too. Porcelain, and these kinds of erotica pieces are very, very typical coming out of the late part of the 19th, early 20th century um, in Asia. In Japan, you see, of course, a lot of these pieces that relate to the Edo period, the Edo period, which is the late 19th, early 20th century. It's the time when, of course, the pleasure parlors are coming up around it within sections, a particular section of the city of Tokyo, which was called Edo at that particular time. Um, so a couple of different things about that particular cup. You only have one? Yeah, okay. just the one. Typically, Okay, typically it would come in a group with four others or five to a set with a decanter, right? And value on that one, it, yours dates to the turn of the 20th century, 1900, 1910, that neck of the woods. Erotica pieces are collectible and valuable. People do collect them and like them. They're relatively interesting. They also go along with Japanese woodblock prints. There are a lot of Japanese woodblock prints that show, of course, this kind of subject matter and value on your piece, which dates late 19th, early 20th century. I'd go a little closer to the 1900 earmark, you know, turn of the century. Value on your piece, which is porcelain. And of course, hand-painted value on that piece, just about $35 for the one cup. Wow. What did you, what did you pay? For both pieces, I paid 50 cents. 50 cents. There you go. So people sometimes will really, really mark these very low. What made you buy it? Well, because I had Unusual. just seen your show for the first time, I'd seen your show and yeah. it was different and I knew what they were portraying, which was again, different. Yeah. Okay. So when it's unusual, you said, oh, I'm going to try this. So 50 cents, you're never going to get hurt. And let's talk a little bit about the lids. A lot of times they, a lot of people, some people are going, oh, well, it's a lid and it's closed and let's just put it together, put the tape on it and sell it. 
that does happen. But what also sometimes happens, you know, to realize that people are trying to sell things, they don't always realize they don't they don't want to intentionally, you know, do something wrong. So you know, sometimes they think, I think it works. So I'm going to put the tape over it so we don't lose the lid or so the lid doesn't get broken while other people are shopping. So that's a pretty common thing in thrift stores, yard sales, estate sales. Where did you buy it, Christina? I bought it up in, I was visiting my son. He's going to, I'm going to be a grandma for the first time. And I was visiting my son, thank you, up in Arlington, Virginia this weekend. So I just bought it. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So you were in a thrift store, you were in a yard sale or an estate sale, thrift store. A little yeah. thrift store. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun to go in different places, which is why a lot of my, of course, my thrift store videos are popular because it's fun to see different places and what they have in different thrift stores, which is what we do here on the channel. But anyway, if you send me a, um, if you send me a mailing address through our office, um, I'd like to make a baby blanket for your new baby. So <gasps> uh, see you soon. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. God bless. Bye. Thank you. So that's a nice thing. And that's a good lesson to learn. So you start to understand how the people are actually putting pieces onto a shelf, what they're thinking when they're thinking of marketing it. And a lot of it is just, they don't want it to get broken beforehand. They probably did think that it was actually a lid that went to it. They probably didn't realize that that little small lid probably went to a teapot. Okay. So cups don't typically have lids. You could have a lid on a cup, but it's not as commonplace. And with those erotica pieces, they usually go along with drinking. So oftentimes that's what you're seeing, but those are out there. Um, are they common? Not really common, but they do show up. So of course I've seen them before. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you doing? Good. Is this me? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, how are you? Can you turn Hi. your camera so it's horizontal? Oh, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. That's all right. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm, up here, I'm up here in Grand Junction, Colorado. And Grand Junction. Found, wow. Yeah, it's beautiful up here. Hey, I went down to the thrift store and I got a uh, picture the other day. I didn't negotiate on it. They wanted $35 for it. And I okay. talked them down to 30 bucks and it was half price. So actually I paid like $17 with tax. Okay. What I got is a- uh, Oh, your math is off. <laughs> it's 35. Oh yeah, well, right, right. But half anyway- a 30, that's, Isn't half a 30, 15? Or is my math that bad? <laughs> 15 you gotta go and then horizontal, little... Grand Junction. And then, you gotta go and horizontal. Then... I gotta get back to you because they can't see it on the replay. I'm sorry. There's a whole thing if you don't go horizontal. <laughs> anyway, uh... I won't go any farther than that. Um, anyway, I'm Dr. Lori, and a couple of different things I want you to remember, of course, that um that we're here and we're doing, of course, the Ask Dr. Lori Lives. And I'm happy to see all of your objects and evaluate these. Let's see my next guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, honey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. <laughs> what can um, I talk to with you about today? Where are you calling from? What's your first name? My name's Holly, and I'm calling Hi, from Belleville, Kansas. Oh, Kansas. And nice. I like Kansas. It's hot now, though. <laughs> it's getting there. Getting there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to Ohio on, my, on <clears throat> this weekend, so I'm hoping it's a little bit cooler. It will be. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. good to see um, you. What's happening, Holly? I do estate auctions. Okay. And I found this guy. It's a cookie jar. And a friend of mine actually watches you and he sent me over to you. Um, I cannot find this anywhere. And the only thing on the bottom is it says Italy right here. I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said about the bottom. The only thing on the bottom. And then you did it really quick and you didn't let me look at it. So yeah, it says Italy. Uh -huh. um, okay. It's yeah, right there. Yeah. You can barely see it. Made in Italy. Okay. Made in Italy. Yep. Um, Jesse thought it was made in the 1800s. Well, Jesse's totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who's Jesse anyway? Does he have a PhD and 100 years of experience like I do? I mean, nice guy, but no. He's a <laughs> gold prospector that watches you and collects cookie jars. So. Well, tell him I like him. <laughs> I'm glad he's collecting cookie jars, but it's not a 19th century cookie jar. It's old, but it's not that old. And here's some of the tips. Here's what I want you to understand so all of you can learn what to look for. First of all, take it apart. Put the bottom part of the cookie jar somewhere. So you don't click it and hit it and break it and problems. Okay, first of all, first things first, it says made in a place. It says made in a particular place. If it says made in anywhere, that has to be a mark that starts in 1875 or later. Okay. okay? Now, it says made in Italy and it's actually embossed in. They don't start doing that until about the 19 teens, 19 teens. 1910, that neck of the woods. So we're okay. already out of the 19th century. We're now in the 20th century. Okay. okay. 
Now, look on the underside of this piece. Let's look on the underside. Okay, you see how that's made? You see how basically that line, that black line is very, very sharp all the way around? Yes. That's done by a machine that is not introduced until 1925. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, the part that's hand painted is the part that's kind of like it looks like a little cane. That's hand painted. Yeah. The face is hand painted. Okay. And then this portion hand painted and the little wrap around the head. The okay. black portions are actually done similar to if you were spray. You ever spray? When I was in museums, they used to like to come in and they'd, they'd spray paint a new color on the back walls and they'd use the sprayers. Yeah. You know, that goes all the way back to the late 80s, early 90s when I was in museums. So <laughs> basically, that's what they would use. I know you're laughing. You're going, I wasn't even born yet. I know. <laughs> I'm very old. Anyway, this particular piece is different from that. So this piece is a very typical 1930s to 1950s era piece. Okay. So we're 50 years later than what your friend said. Nice person, good collector. That's great. But I see 50,000 objects a year. Yeah. Made in Italy. Now, it's Italian, and that brings up value for the cookie jars. Okay. Did this person want to buy this cookie jar from you? Uh, no, he couldn't find any information on it. Okay. I only paid two dollars and fifty cents for it. Okay, so he wouldn't even say, oh, "I'll give you a hundred bucks." He was looking for it. He couldn't find it, so we didn't know what it, the appraisal was on it. Oh, okay, so he's not going to take a chance on it with his knowledge base until this happens. Your cookie jar is worth about three hundred and fifty dollars. It's relatively rare. It's not very rare. It dates to about the nineteen thirties and nineteen forties, based on actual sales records. The cookie jar market is not what it once was. I'm yeah. sure you know he has a great collection. Everybody has nice collections of cookie jars, but they're not in the ten in the eight hundred, twelve hundred dollar range that they once were. And they yeah. were very, very high. But then everybody started to collect cookie jars. Italian cookie jars oftentimes are a different shape. You notice that they're big like this. Yeah, our cookie jars are more round, or the cookie jars are actually square in America. The Italian cookie jars are going to, in fact, be utilized for different kinds of cookies, like pizzelles. Pizzelles are round and they have to be stacked, or they're for biscotti, biscotti, right? And they have to go like this, right? So kind of around, so they don't get cracked. So a lot of that, the Italian cookies are a little bit different. That's a nice cookie jar. I like it very much. Good for you for two dollars. That's a real bargain, Holly. Thank and you're you so much. Sweet. You're real sweet to be here too. Tell your friend, thanks for sending them along. Keep sharing the channel. I need all of you to share. Thanks, Holly. Okay, thanks, Lori. I like that piece very much. It was a nice piece. And um, I have to say that parts of it were, of course, machine done. So you have to figure out when the machines actually are made and that will help you to identify the date. The other thing, you're welcome, Tiffany. Uh, the other thing that people have to realize about all of this, and thank you very much for the super chats and the super stickers. It keeps this channel going. Um, a couple things you have to realize um, is that, in fact, the folks who are, oh, well, I, I want to make a decision about how much I'm willing to pay. I need an appraisal first. You certainly can do that right here. I do a lot of those so people can understand what to pay for it. But be aware that people want to pay as low as possible. So um, I want you to know what you've got and to know what to look for. And that's what all, all of my videos really show you, what to look for. You can subscribe to my newsletter at drlorev.com. Many of you realize that the newsletter is giving you chock full of information that you can use. I always call it news you can use. <laughs> so go to drlorev.com and of course, sign up for the newsletter. Here's my next guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. How can I help you today? What's Sorry. your name? I'm going to give expert answers to all your questions. And I want to hear the questions from the group too. Everybody who's watching, if you have a question about the object that's brought in here with my guest, I'm happy to field those as well. What's your name, hon? I'm Elisa and I'm from Colorado. Hi, Elisa. Nice to see you. Are you a thrifter? Are you a shopper? Are you a reseller? Um, all of those. <laughs> okay. Like, like everybody. Yes. So I found this vase at a like indoor thrift, like an indoor store okay. um, in Colorado Springs. And it has a made in Italy sticker. Okay. Can you back, can you put it on the table and can we just focus on the object? Can you back it up? Yeah. We're looking at you. There you go. There you go. Nice. Okay. So made in Italy, hand painted case can we can we look at the object hon oh yeah sorry yeah you know i need a little time to look at the object so i can describe it so people can see it so cased glass hand painted and the piece is 12 inches tall 10 inches tall 
let's About not spin, spin. let's not spin it. Let's just look at one side. It's got some jewels that are in fact applied on top. It's got some gilt work, which is the gold. And remember, the different colors in glass. You know, different colored glass actually comes from different things. For example, if you want red glass, you have to actually mix it with an oxide or a metal. If you want red glass, you have to mix it with gold. So it, it's not just, oh, amazing, we just decided red glass, you know. So basically, that's what you're looking at there. I like the way it's been cased. I like the curve of it, right? How old do you think it is? I was going to say 50s to uh, 50s and 60s. Probably 60s. Shape. Yeah, it's probably 60s. Um, the top of it has a particular element to it. You're welcome, Elizabeth. I'm happy to share my knowledge with everybody. I hope you'll share the channel with everybody. This particular piece is a nice piece, and I would say value on that piece, about $75, made in the 1960s in Italy. It is not Murano. Everybody thinks every piece of glass in Italy is made in Venice. That particular piece is nice. It's not Murano-influenced. It is not in terms of it. Now, Murano is a great, of course, long-standing um, glass manufacturing center, but that piece I do not think is Venetian. Nice. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Nice to see you. So um, when I, wa I want you to, of course, show me what you've got and show me why you bought it. Oh, I forgot to ask her how much she paid for it. Um, but a lot of things, in fact, here that we're seeing at Ask Dr. Lori Live are, of course, the things that you're collecting, the glass, the costume jewelry, the ceramics the prints, the paintings, the stuff that's out there. Here's my next guest. Hi, Hello. I'm Dr. Lori, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm Rowan and I am in Denver. Hi, Rowan. And I have, um, actually, I'm gonna do this thing instead of that thing. You have a lot of books, Rowan. You must be a good, voracious reader. <laughs> I am. Good. <laughs> I admit it. I have a Me dragon. too. I like that. I like that, that's wonderful. Thank you, Lily. Thank you for your nice compliment. Okay, so this is a nice dragon. The top of it has a figure, a, 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 an element that kind of looks like a pearlescent piece. He's, no, it's um, it has a gold tone on it. He's, uh, he's holding his jewel that he has caught. Okay, so it's more of a gold tone? Yes. A ceramic gold tone, so a gold. No, it's metal. It's metal, but painted over to, to, to look gold? Yes. Okay. So it's all done one thing. Okay. Can you hold it up? May I see the underside of the bottom? There you there go. Is, whoops, camera. There is a signature under the tail. Okay. It's, I can't see that. Can you see that? No, it's right there, but I'm trying oh. to turn it so I can get at it. Have you been able to read the signature? I have not yet. I'm going to work on it some more. He's, okay. I, he's, uh, I think he's probably patinated bronze. He's certainly not iron. He's not magnetic. He's not magnetic, but it doesn't seem to be too heavy. He's heavy. <laughs> oh, he's heavy? Okay. So he could be patinated bronze. He dates to the late part of the 19th century, probably sometime between 1865 and 1900. And typically these, without information about the signature, but typically these go in the price, the value range, uh, based on an actual sales record retail value between $500 and $800. Mm -hmm. I would probably put it closer to $500 in today's market. We haven't seen as much turnover as typical, uh, but you could see them going in a high, very good collectibles market, about $800. We're not seeing the Asian pieces sell as strongly as they have in maybe six months ago. But based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold, it's a beautiful sculpture. It's very nicely done. And if indeed it is bronze, you're probably at that $500 to $800 range. Thank you, Rowan. Okay. How much did you pay for it and where did you acquire it? I didn't pay for it at all. It was a present about 20 years ago. A gift from someone who, from Asia? A gift from a Japanese gentleman I was seeing. He Very nice. Like 30 years ago. <laughs> Very nice. I like it. Well, you know, 30 years goes by like that. 50 years goes by like that. You blink and a couple more years have gone by. So nice to see you, Rowan. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, a couple of different things with respect to Asian sculptures and particularly to pieces of bronze. When you're looking at bronze, I want you to look for, of course, foundry marks, signatory marks, the signature that she was 
talking about. When you're looking at bronze, I want you to look for weight and I want you to understand a distribution of weight. What does that mean, Lori? Well, when you're looking at a sculpture, the weight has to go somewhere. So it has to be held up by something. Okay, so if you think of, of course, Michelangelo's David, there's a trunk behind him that's actually supporting all the weight of the marble. It's the same thing with a bronze sculpture. There's something that has to support the weight. So something that curves like her, her dragon curve, you'll notice that the weight is basically distributed as it goes back and forth. That's something that happens with high quality sculptures. So don't forget that too. I'm always here to teach you what to look for. So what others channels just can't do. It always surprises me when uh, folks say, well, I talked to this person and I talked to that person. Remember, a person who has some interest, if they're a collector, if they're a, 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 a quote unquote appraiser who wants to resell, if they're doing that, they probably are not giving you the straight skinny on your object because they have a vested interest. Appraisers should be completely unbiased and not get involved in the brokering of objects, my opinion. And of course, that's how you get a, a, a rare, uh, that's how you get an accurate appraisal. And you want an accurate appraisal. You don't want someone who says, oh, well, I don't know, and I'm not sure, and I do this, and I do that. You want an accurate appraisal based on actual sales records or similar pieces have sold. And they have to have sold, not just what somebody listed something for. Um, they have to have sold for that. And some Coca-Cola bottles will sell upwards of $3,000, $4,000. I've appraised many of them over the years. Thank you very much. That's a nice one. And in the context of a collection, remember, if you have a collection of something, keep adding to that collection. It will only increase the value of every piece in your collection. Usually increases it by about 10%. So build those collections. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm calling from Corpus Christi, Texas. Hi, Ryan. Ryan or Brian? Brian. Ryan, honey. How, um, I like your piece, but look at all the water stains. Yeah, I, I bought it like this in uh, South Carolina. You bought it like that in South Carolina and you brought it to Corpus Christi. Yes. Okay. Tell me a little bit. How much did you pay for it? And then tell me, why do you watch the channel? I paid $35 for it and uh, I've always liked antiques. And just one day I wanted to start to uh, learn how to value antiques. Okay. Have you, have you been learning? Yes, I have. Okay. So... When you watch my videos, what are the ones that you're looking for most? Are you looking for the ones about paintings? Are you looking for the ones about anything that you can sell? Do you do a niche? What do you do? Uh, I just look at everything, really. Okay. So do you think you paid too much for this at $35? I feel like I might have, yeah, because of the damage and there's a little hole right there. So it's a painting, it's a gouache, watercolor, and of course, oil paint on paper, correct? Right. Uh, where do you think it is? Where do you think the scene is? Um, somewhere in Europe, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would say that that scene really does look like places like um, the Netherlands, Holland and such because of the figures, because of the windmill, because of, of course, the, the area, of course, in the snow. I like the juxtaposition of the colors. I like the landscape. I like the highlighting and the details. I don't like the water stains because right. that requires paper conservation. Also, you notice the brown tone over the whole piece? That's called acid burning. Right. That means that that piece was in a mat that was acidic and it's bled into the paper. Paper oftentimes will soak that up like a sponge. So those are a couple of the issues that would give me pause. But the portion, like the, the whole left side of the painting and the whole, most of the left side of the painting is really in very nice shape. The hole is a problem. A hole in a piece of paper is pretty hard to fix. <laughs> so that's a problem. But for $35, I would say it's probably Dutch. Uh, dates probably to the 1930s to the 1950s. The frame is American and done at a later time, probably put on in the 1960s. And value on your piece in that condition, I would go around 70 bucks. So you got it at half price. Okay. Not bad, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Thank well, nice you. to talk with you, Ryan. Thanks so much. And keep it up. You'll find those things. He has a good eye. That particular piece, the compositional elements were really quite nice. I liked the different tonalities of, of course, the figures and the landscape with the snow. How much is paper conservation? Well, Deborah, you know, a piece like that could cost you anywhere between $500 and $1,000 to get it conserved. That would mean they'd repair that patch and then they actually would... Um, they actually would go through. Uh, when I was in a museum, I got a $50,000 grant, grant from the Getty Foundation to do paper conservation on a group of pieces called the North American Indian by uh, Edward S. Curtis. And it was literally 50 grand to literally paper conserve uh, a portfolio of those. It's very, very expensive because it's very labor intensive. And, um, in terms of that very labor intensive, it was a big you know, feather in my cap to get the grant for that particular museum, but the labor to put into paper conservation is very high. So to just conserve one piece can be very, very high. So paper conservation, I want you to think about, and I want you to look of course at these pieces. Lori, thank you very much for your super sticker and for always supporting the channel. All of you for always supporting the channel with super chats and super stickers. I hope, and I've been, I've been told, so I'm grateful for that that all the information I'm giving you is helping you. That's why. And uh, thanks again for all of those. Don't forget to share the channel too. But getting back to paper conservation, that's a great question. And I wanna hear all of your great questions, whether they're great or not, I'm happy to answer them. If you have a question about, of course, an object that I'm talking about or about something else, put it into the comments and I'll take it right here and ask Dr. Lori live. Here's my next guest. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm Patricia from Brentwood, California. Hi, Patricia, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Okay. I have a, I don't know, let's see. You're doing great, doing great. Okay. I'm not, I, I'm not sure if it's a, um, I'm not sure exactly what it is because it has no pixelation. It's a hand colored lithograph. Okay, and it's signed. I don't know if you can see that. Can't see that. <laughs> what does it say? Whose signature is it? Signed in the middle? It is, but I don't know who it is. All right. I'm told that um, it appears to be German. Oh, it's definitely it's definitely a scene in the central portion of Europe. And I yeah. think the the first letter, the first name is an R, and the first letter of the second name is a K. How did you acquire it? And did you frame it? No, it came like this. Wow. It's $6.99 at the Goodwill. Wow. That's a lot of framing. <laughs> that's I a know, lot it's of framing. beautiful, right? But I don't yes. like the back. Yes. It's a lot of framing. Can we see the front, please? Sure. Can we see the front? It's a lot of framing for a couple of reasons. Those are cutout mats. Those are specialty die cut. There's, I mean, there's a lot of framing going on. There's a good $200 just in that framework. That means the frame itself and the mat and the way it's been actually laid down to museum quality or to museum standards, right? Um, yes. The back looks like, of course, a dust screen characteristic of the late part of the 20th century. No, yeah. it's, it's, okay. it's, it's weird. See it? It's not weird. <laughs> Not where I mean, it's like it's a, a board, but that's a dust screen. Oh, that's okay. A, I'm sorry. That's a I dust screen. Paper. Well, the paper could be a, called a dust screen as well. So okay. late 19th cent, late 1900s, and I would say value on your um, on your European hand colored lithograph in the frame. Uh, middle to late 1900s, I would go late 1900s after 1965. Value on that piece about $250. That's a great deal for six Thank bucks. Thank you. Yeah, great I'm deal for six bucks. I'm excited, Dr. Lori. Thank Very you. Nice. People like landscape scenes. People like, of course, those pieces that look like, of course, an exotic place because it reminds them, of course, of travel. It's nice. We'll get a little more information, of course, on the artist too, but in a range, right, a piece like that that's framed like that, executed in that manner. If it wasn't framed like that, the print alone would be about $150. Trained artists making those prints lithography. Very nice. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm showing you what to look for, and I'm taking your questions along with, of course, guests who are joining me with their objects. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hello, Dr. Lori. It's nice, nice to see, see you. From Virginia. So what have we got here? Um, It's some kind of fish pan. I'm not really sure what kind of fish they are, but, uh, okay. 
Can you get a little closer? Sorry. It's because of the reflection is what it is. I don't care about the signature. I want to look at the fish. Yeah, it's just hard for me to see what I'm you're doing. doing. Good. No, you're doing good. I'm sorry. I should direct you. You're doing good. Very nice. All right. Okay. So it looks like they're kind of playing the trumpets. Right? That one over there, it looks like there's a horn, the yellow horn at upper right. You no, know, I never realized. I thought it was a fish tail. Well, I think they're fish. Is it a tail? No, it is a trumpet. I, as Thank you, Sandra. I love doing I, the show. That's funny. It kind of looks funny, right? So um, it looks like these fish are kind of having a party. I love fish. You know, fish are the symbol of long life and fish relate to a lot of things. Now that's unusual and odd. Okay, so what's happened is they put another piece of material on top of it, which tells me that this piece is probably done overseas and not in the United States and then shipped here. You'll notice the pink of that frame. That frame is a Mexican frame, but I think that the piece itself is probably also from the tropics. Um, I probably see it in places like the Caribbean or such. Value on that piece. How'd you get that piece and how much did you pay for it? Um, I paid two twenty five for it and that was half off. And um, I got it at the Goodwill by my house. So you paid two dollars and twenty five cents. Yep. For the frame too. Yes. The frame's worth fifty bucks. The painting's worth another forty. I'd go ninety dollars, not much more. I okay. think that's kind of kind. All right. Well, I appreciate it, Doctor Lori. My pleasure, sweetheart. Keep it up. Keep looking for these objects. What she was probably looking for when she did it was she, well, maybe, I don't know, she, maybe she's not there, um, was she was probably looking for the texture. I always tell you to look for texture to make sure that you're not buying a print, right? So you look for texture and she found the texture and said, well, it's textural, so it must be an actual original painting, which it is, which is why it has a little bit more value. The same piece, if that were an actual print, a color lithograph, right? A chromo lithograph, that kind of thing would be much lower. So remember, it was still an original work, just not so great. How do you tell if it's a lithograph? I did a whole video about how do you tell if it's a lithograph. Use the binge link and you can find that video. I showed you with the Dr. Lori cam, what you look for, how you get your loop, right? Which you can get on the shopping page, but the binge link is where you're gonna find those videos because I always show you what to look for. Because once you know what to look for, you're empowered, you can then buy it. For low, you could resell it for high. I'll teach you all those tips too. I'm teaching you information you can use so you're empowered so you can succeed. And you can help me succeed by sharing the channel, sharing the channel, but use the binge link. Yeah, this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD antiques appraiser. And I evaluate about 50,000 objects every year through our website and of course with um, shows like this one as well as as my large public events that are held nationwide. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Liz. I'm calling from Alaska. Hi, Liz. I love Alaska, especially especially when it starts <laughs> to warm up. Alaska's beautiful, wonderful. It's, it's a place of wonder, you know. Uh, the great, of course, Pacific Northwest. I love Alaska very much. I've had the good fortune to go all the way, of course, to the Bering Sea. Uh, it was a lot of fun uh, to be up there. What part of Alaska are you in? I live on the, uh, in Seward on the Kenai Peninsula. Sure, I know Seward too, have, of course. Yeah, the beautiful Kenai Fjords. That's anyway, right. That's um, right. I have a dish here. Nice. And on the bottom, it says sample England. Yep. And I have no idea. It has gold on it also. Okay. Um, the whole, can you hold it like this to the two handles? Do you know what the dish is for? What this cup is for? Uh, no, I do not. Well, this cup is for bouillon. So this cup is for bouillon. Two handles on a cup that is very large like this is for bouillon. So a broth soup. I drink bone broth. I don't know if you drink bone broth. I try to do that to keep like every oh, all yes. the levels calm because I'm always trying to lose weight. So bone mm -hmm. broth or any kind of broth. Thank you, Rachel. I'm happy to be able to do this. If you share the channel, I can do it more. So basically what you have is bouillon. And it was very, very typical for you to have bouillon in the middle of a meal. That particular piece is a sample. So what they're doing is they're going to use that as the base design, and then they're going to decorate, decide how they're gonna decorate based on that design. So you'll see a lot of bouillon cups like that. That's one of 12 usually, part of a large service, large service. Porcelain, 
with the gold around mm -hmm. the rim, with the gold around the handles. And if you see that form, <clears throat> the English cups with that form, that piece is usually dates to at least 1920. That form where it's not just a handle that comes like this, you know, like a handle like that, if this is my fist is the cup and this, the handle looks like this, but actually there's a loop mm -hmm. that comes down and attaches is for more support, right? So when you pick up that you can actually slurp right from the cup, people would think that's terrible, but that was very commonplace. Also, you'll notice that that same okay. cup, not common, but also sometimes they'll put a heavier chowder in that cup. You know, I grew up in New England, so clam chowder, you know, with the, with, of course, the potatoes and the clams and the, and the milk. Those kinds of chowders can be drank, mm -hmm. can be actually consumed that way too. Value on that cup alone, England, a sample cup, which is relatively rare. Typical cups like that are like 15 bucks a piece. Yours is probably worth more like $18 for one because it's a sample. So it's the base that all the other decorations are going to come from. Thanks so much. My regards to Alaska. I really love the inside passage too. It's a, it's a oh, wonderful 99 place. cents, by the way. Oh, great. Oh my gosh. That's wonderful. So she did very well. And that's how you double and triple your money. Knowledge is going to help you to double and triple your money. So good for you. And thank you for noting that in, I was thinking about Alaska. I for, oh, I've been forgetting to ask people what uh, they've been paying for these great pieces. So that's a nice piece too. And it's nice to learn a little bit more about what all of these forks and dishes and cups and such are actually used for. It'll help you, of course, when you see them in the thrift store, the yard sale, the antique shop, or in your grandmother's attic. You know, anywhere that you find art, antiques, and collectibles, I'm here to help you. Does the iconography increase the value on a piece, say, like a famous castle? Yeah. Yeah. Lisa, iconography, a symbolism, um, or imagery. So there's a difference between iconography and subject matter. Okay. So subject matter is going to be, oh, I painted a castle. Iconography is usually relates to a symbol. Um, oh, I painted a castle with the Masonic sign on it, right? That's iconography, the Masonic sign, the castle is subject matter. So there's a little bit of a difference. Is it a big deal that you know the difference? No, it's not a big deal. I received my loop yesterday. You're happy. I'm glad you got your loop. Well, use it, use it, use it, use it. You've got to get one or two, maybe four of them, put them in the car, in your pocketbook, in the house, and wherever, wherever you go shopping, have it on your person. It really is a big help. Here's my next guest. Hi, I'm I Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. I was on earlier. I got cut off. I had one statue showing, oh. but um, I actually have two, and they're stamped Clodion. They're um, saying Clodion. Okay. Well, Clodion is a very famous, of course, sculptor. Clodion is a famous sculptor, and that's what the figures are from. Um, these pieces are oftentimes, so how many, so you have two, and they're both electrified, right? Yes. It yes. looks like the band has been changed out. How did you acquire them? Um, I bought them from a lady. They belonged to her mother, and she was kind of cleaning out. Yeah. How much did you pay? A uh, hundred dollars for two of them. Oh, you so you paid fifty bucks each. Mm -hmm. So you did great. Of course, that three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollar range for the group. So you got them at one quarter of their actual value. You paid twenty five percent. So you did great. Do you collect lamps like that in that art art deco style? I love anything that's old and just catches my eye. I <laughs> actually I actually set up a, an LLC so that I didn't have to explain to my husband why I was buying uh, so much antique stuff. I so. think that's fantastic. What's your first name, honey? Megan. Megan, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Georgia, near Fort uh, Gordon, Georgia. I'm really proud of you. Have you been watching the channel? Is, my, is the channel helping you? Yes, and I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> Well, you're going to be like me right now. <laughs> I'm going to help you. All you got to do is share the channel and I'm going to teach you. And it's great. I'm so proud of you. Good for you. And you know what? I bet your husband's probably a very nice guy. He wouldn't mind what you're doing. And it's good that you established the LLC. Make it a business for yourself. Make it a business for yourself. I want you empowered. And make sure that you do what you like to do. He'll understand. If he cares about you, he'll understand. And it's not only about the money, but you're doing great. And the other thing I want you to do is keep educating those eyeballs. Keep looking, looking, looking. Lamps are very, very popular. People like them a lot. And they resell them. Most people resell them very, very low. Make sure you're getting the right information, however, when you're trying to identify those pieces. And look up Clodion. You're going to find, of course, um, the, French the French artist who's known for those particular particular figures, but you'll be able to resell them or maybe they'll just look great in your home. They're probably going to stick around in my home because I just liked the way they looked. Good. Well, you enjoy <laughs> yourself. Stay with me. I'll teach you all of it. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Bye doll.
<laughs> what a sweetheart. She'll do well. She'll do well. Why? Because she's basically taking the steps to make sure that her business is going to be successful. You got to learn the information. You got to lay the groundwork, right? So I'm glad you're here, Angel. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see all of you. If you have questions about any of the objects that I'm talking about here or your object at home, if you want to be part of Ask Dr. Lori Live, I do it for you. So I appreciate you watching. Lots of fun, lots of fun. So my guests are here. I'm here, and it's good to be with all of you. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you next time. <laughs>